Hail, stranger! Welcome to the Crooked Cleric, where the ales are great and the tales elate. Today, we have a story about a rare beast. The Neckbeard Mary Sue Combo. A terrifying beast indeed. Grab a snack and settle in. I call this one. Three paragraphs about the beard, and that was only the beginning. I'm going to preface this with the following statement. To the player who did all of this in one of my games, thank you. You have challenged my creativity, my patience, and my awareness. I now know what to look for when screening players for D&D. It was summer of 92. Just kidding. It was actually spring of 2012. When I first encountered this player. We'll call him Ben. That isn't his real name. And I'm sorry to all of you Bens out there. This isn't a story about you. But feel free to take notes and know what not to do. Ben wanted to play a dwarf character in a and d game I was planning on running. Ben was introduced to me by another player. No one in the current group knew Ben well, but that was okay. We were, I'd like to think, a friendly, non-elitist, very diverse gaming group, and we actively welcomed him in. Prior to every campaign, I would give all the players and their characters a bit of an interview to try to get an idea of what kind of game or what kind of challenges they'd like to face, what type of character they were playing, what were the important backstory elements they wanted to incorporate into the story, just general vague stuff. As this was a homebrew world, I didn't foresee any difficulty in incorporating some of the more anachronistic ideas of the players and writing them off as lore or culture, if need be. I usually received roughly two to three paragraphs at most, and this has always been just fine with me. But not Ben. Ben gave me a 27-page backstory, written in size 9 calibri. His character, who shall be known in this tale as Dwarf McDwarfster, was a king dispossessed of his mountain. He came from a long line of dwarven rulers, and a famed family of warriors, known for their unique choice of weapon being a falchion, as opposed to the traditional dwarven axes and ergroshes. One of his requests was to have weapon proficiency falchion at the start of the game. Well, that's okay, I figured. Not too big of a request there. He tried to backstory in some epic level kingly resources, but I put the kibosh on that early on. The party was only level 5, so that wouldn't be a good move. He then tried to explain to me that he had various dwarven connections throughout the world, and people recognized him. Okay, I gave him that. That's fine. Some interesting NPC interactions make the new player happy, make him feel important. He then wanted to know where his lost mountain kingdom was. I placed it randomly in my world, in a large northern continent that was primarily ruled by an emperor. He explained that his family never recognized the emperor's rule. Okay, I said. No problemo. How about this is why your family lost their mountain? No, he responded. We lost our mountain due to a demon invasion. I didn't see it in the backstory, I explained. He said he'd rewrite it. All right, no problem, I thought. We still had a week before we had our session zero. Well, the game started, and I never got a backstory in time, but I figured I knew most of what was going on. All the characters were interacting with each other, getting to know one another, but then all of a sudden, we had a standoffish dwarven ex-king who started barking orders to the rest of the party. Some players played along with this. Others didn't appreciate it. As I would narrate the few opening scenes of the quests, I would be interrupted often by Ben, who felt the need to constantly call out the actions of Dwarf McDwarfsta during the cutscenes. It must just be a player quirk, I thought. Well, it started grating a bit on me. At one point when dividing the loot, Dwarf McDwarfster called first pick over everything since he was a king. Some of the party thought he was RPing, but others quickly identified that he was being a bit of an asshat. Three was party infighting, and rather than let the other disgruntled party members kill off a new character and a new player, I would interrupt their bickering with a more pressing matter, or try to mediate things, and it began to grow tiresome. The turning point in all our interactions with Ben came when a friend of mine offered to draw up wonderful portraits of the characters for free. So she would take a player aside and ask them about how their character looked and she would take notes, and work for a few solid hours making a free digital image of the character for them. All the portraits were almost always absolutely stunning. 
And then it was Ben's turn. He sat down with the artist, and when asked to describe his character, he took out his now 45-page revised backstory, oh my god, and description, and read it off to the artist. In his character description, he had spent three paragraphs detailing every little nuance and hair of his beard, the rings in it, the way they're all tangled together, the curls, the flare, the shade, the color. But that was only the beginning. Then he started explaining the complex workings of his apparent full-plate adamantine armor, the intricate details and runic script of his falchion, and the meanings behind each rune, the precise scuff marks on his boots, the color of his eyes, his character's favorite hobbies, the list goes on. After roughly 45 minutes of discussion, and watching the artist sweat bullets as she furiously tried to keep up with the description, he finishes. Two weeks later, the artist doles out the character portraits. The party is extremely happy and impressed with how they all turned out. The artist received nothing but compliments and is absolutely thrilled with all the feedback. Except for Ben's feedback. The man simply frowns at the drawing and says, Well, that's not really how I envisioned his beard to look like. And his armor's a bit off. It, it looks like it wasn't made for him, you know. Everyone at the table was dead silent. He had to be joking, I hoped. No, I was wrong. Ben wasn't joking. He genuinely felt as he expressed that the artist could have done better. I turned to the artist and I could see her slack jaw and tears in the corner of her eyes. This poor girl was speechless. And Ben didn't think much of her reaction. The rest of the session was spent with the party ignoring his character and over-DMing me their actions whenever Ben and Dwarf McDwarfster wanted to do things. He was iced out for a whole session, but the player didn't even seem to notice. This went on for two more weeks until the campaign ended, upon which Ben would seek me out and hand me a list of recommendations he had for me to up my DMing. I'll save you guys the pains of most of the things that were on the list, but I can immediately recall the first few items were 1. More RP opportunities 2. Better character artists 3. Weapons break in the middle of combat 4. More realistic fight sequences 5. The next game center around his character reclaiming his mountain kingdom If you've made it this far, thank you so much. And if you're this player, I'm not sorry that I never invited you to another game again, nor am I sorry for ignoring your messages and recommendations on how to be a better DM. Simply watching how you treated others and realizing my mistake for appeasing you was enough of a lesson for me. Sorry. Not sorry. And that is the end of our story. Did it quench your thirst for entertainment? I knew it would. Come back another time, and I shall have another tale for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe on the way out. We'll see you next time.